Hi everyone, here's the Bookemist once again, and today I'm reviewing V by Thomas Pynchon, the last novel I had to read by what is possibly my favorite writer in the whole world. But first, let me introduce you to the noble Italian martial art of being a paraculo, which literally means shielding your own ass. My experience of V was completely all over the place, I found it extremely difficult as a read actually, and this is a book that I will have to reread at a moment in the future where I'm not so busy with stuff to read and write for my PhD as I am at the moment. And uh, for the longest time I was tempted not to film a review in the first place, uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it eventually because I mentioned it so many times on my channel that I would talk about my impression of this. So again, take this more as a recording of my experience with the novel rather than an informed or academic review of any sorts. I was a bit doubtful when I approached V because for the last year lots of people have been telling me how they think it's Pynchon's most enjoyable and even best novel in, in his old bibliography. But then in the last few weeks just before I started reading the book, I had a few comments by friends who told me, oh, you're reading V, mm, okay, good luck with that, I didn't really, I, I was a bit puzzled by it, or, oh, good luck with that, I didn't enjoy it too much, and so I was like, oh, shit, uh, what, what kind of book is it going to be? And it turned out it's both. The, 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 the most puzzling thing about V is that it is, on the one hand, it's probably Pynchon's most enjoyable novel, while on the other end, it's his most difficult in some ways. The reason behind that is that V is very much a modernist novel. It is a high modernist novel in the same vein as Wolf's works or as uh, The Ulysses by Joyce, those kinds of works. And there are times in these novels, especially when the narrative zooms in very much into the mind of a single character, where it becomes very difficult, the, the writing becomes very dense and it becomes extremely difficult to follow the flow of the prose. I agree with Professor Brian McHale, who in his seminal study Postmodernist Fiction believes, calls V a modernist novel and believes that Crying of Love 49 is the first of Pynchon's novels that is liminal postmodernism and starts using the same technique and stuff that will turn into full-fledged high postmodernism in Gravity's Rainbow. And if there is no like full-fledged stream of consciousness in this book, there are several passages in here, for instance, Fausto Magistral's letter or some entire chapters that are very stream of consciousy, let's say. At the same time, V is a thrilling novel in many ways. It is a spy novel about the search for this mysterious figure V, which might be a woman but might also be kind of a city, if not something else entirely. It's peopled with android figures and stuff that might not be entirely human. It features people hunting alligators in the sewers of New York City. Most notably though, it already features that quintessential characteristic of Pynchon's fiction, which is that it is filled with secondary stories and subplots and secondary characters that are as interesting as the main ones and so every time you turn a page you might get an entirely different narrative and you have no idea what it's going to be about and some of those subplots are the most rewarding experiences to be had in V. For instance, I loved to bits uh, one subplot you get uh, close to the beginning about a priest converting to Christianity the rats in the, sewer of, of the sewers of New York that was amazing. More macroscopically speaking, V is divided into two very different narratives. A, a, a good half of the novel is set in post-World War II New York City and it is about some pseudo-hipsters going around town, going to parties, trying to have fun and to find love and sex. Uh, whereas the other half of the novel goes back to uh, some of the darkest passages in 20th century European, African and world history. And if the passages in New York City are light-hearted and fun, although actually often they are not, they actually provide very bitter reflections on both the human nature and the human condition in general and the specific condition of contemporary American society in the 50s and early 60s, the passages, the historical passages in Africa and Europe are very bleak and reflect on genocide and on war and on some of the worst episodes in 20th century history, maybe also the most, some of the most unknown terrible episodes in 20th century histories and there is a shitload of those if you start looking and you don't get the same pits of despair and the reflections on human depravity you will get in Gravity's Rainbow but something in the same ballpark. 
And speaking of early 60s, when you start thinking that this novel was written in the early 60s, it becomes mind-blowing because it, the way it talks about sex, the way it talks about violence, about being a schlemmin, about being a loser, it's amazing. It was written before the fucking Beatles and it's already so ahead of its time. Which of course is made so much more mind-blowing if you think that this was Pynchon's first novel and his first long effort. And that's amazing because with all of its hypothetical flows. This is the kind of book, because of its scope, because, because of its ambition, its structure, it's the kind of book that most writers will spend their lives trying to write and trying to conceive. And Pincho wrote it as a first step for like, yeah, you haven't seen anything yet, bitches. So overall, did I like V, didn't I? It was weird as an experience because it's not really like some episodes I liked them, some I didn't. Although probably I enjoyed the part in New York City more, but that's I'm sure for the very simple reason that it's generally easier than the chapters, than the historical chapters. Uh, it's more that, as I said at the beginning, it's a paradox of a novel. It's very difficult and cryptic, it loses itself in its own reflections at times, but it's also enjoyable and great fun. In a way, it works very well as an introduction to Pynchon, if you have never read his stuff, but only if you are already familiar with high modernism, with the works of people such as Virginia Woolf and uh, like the, the heavy stuff by James Joyce, William Faulkner's novels. If you are already familiar with that stuff, dive into V. I'm, I'm sure if you have no problem with that, I'm sure you'll love this novel. It's really enjoyable. As for me, I will tell you if I like it or not once I reread it with all the attention it's, it deserves. This is the kind of book that if you read it closely enough and if you want to read it as it deserves to be read, it's going to take, I, I think, at least uh, one month or something like that. Don't be tricked by its uh, the lightness of some of its scenes, by its fast the fast pace of some of the, the spy scenes and the chase scenes. This is a heavy book, for real. But in general, I do have kind of a problem with modernism. You keep hearing all the time about writers who, for instance, grew up reading contemporary literature and then discovered a previous age and fell in love with it and understood what their generation was rebelling against and then read a, a, a generation that came even before and fell more in love with it again, for me it was kind of the same and not. I mean, I grew up as a reader, uh, I mean, when I was 18, 19, and stuff like that, reading contemporary fiction like David Foster Wallace and Jonathan Franzen rebelling against postmodernism and how cold it was and how destructive. And I was like, yeah, this stuff, I get it. And then I read postmodernism and I discovered that to me that was way more enjoyable and heartfelt than the stuff that supposedly rebelled against its coldness. And then I read modernism and I discovered that, no, I, I didn't really like modernism too much. Postmodernism was the sweet spot for me. Really, I probably have a problem with the kind of approach of that movement to uh, the idea of narration. Let me know what you thought about V, let me know where you stand, is it a great novel, is it an early effort, is, does it deserve the kind of effort you need to put into it to enjoy it fully? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching once again guys, I'll let me know again about your impressions of V, I will see you in the next video, bye guys.